There you go. Hide the cheats. The game Let's see two. what goes through this time. Is Lycan banned? Lycan's no. not banned this time. Omni Knight is banned. Omni was banned first in the last time. Yeah. I think it was Predator who banned it, though. Yeah, the Predator banned it in the first. First pick goes to Tigers this game. Yeah. Take the Lycan. Ban the Lycan. What or was the, other uh, the, hero the Beast Master. What was the other hero that was banned? Remaining. Night Stalker was not banned last time. Uh, I'm pretty sure. It was banned as the fifth ban. As the fifth ban. Because remember I said they wanted Monkey King, they banned Night Stalker. Is the, sorry, the sixth ban. Sixth ban. They banned. Just what was the hero that we're missing that was banned before? Was it the Beast? I think Beast Master might have been banned. There you go. Okay. Was it not? Maybe, I don't remember. It was ages ago. Was it the Sand King? No. No. What are we talking about? The six heroes that were banned the band. in the first. The I don't think bands. it was Night Stalker. Oh. It was Lycan. No. It was Marana. It was Omni. It was Chen. No, it wasn't Chen. Sorry. It was Io. And there's a Warlock ban. It was, was, it was a Silencer, was it? No, it wasn't in the first. I don't, no, Silencer was in the first. first. Anyway, anyway, Lycan's through. They get yeah, the you take the Lycan. Oh, that's Warren. This, you know, Lycan has been pretty much instant win in most games that we've seen. Yeah, a lot of them. But they, they've got their answers. They've got the Naga. They've got the Underlord. Pretty is good, it, pretty good response. I mean, that seemed like they, they were ready for that Lycan, but they're like, they're going to yeah. pick Lycan. We're getting Naga, Siren, Underlord. You've got a way to catch the Lycan, and you've got a way to, to deal with his army, and to a hero that's going to be building up the sort of the auras to keep that the team bad. alive against the Lycan. That was the other hero that was the bad. Clock it was bad. the Clockwork. Okay. Clock very good versus kind of both of these heroes. Clock what do you think against right? the Underlord? You like uh, I mean, you can isolate him. You sure. have a very good catch. You have high yeah, magic damage. It's early laning phase. You have a good damage. Yeah, 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 I guess so, yeah. If you get, like, your level three really early, then you have kill threat on Lord. It's good versus Naga for the, you know, obviously. Oh, yeah, obviously good. Yeah, good against Naga, yeah. That long range initiation or counter initiation. Do you think they scrim a lot together? You'd have to imagine so. You'd imagine yeah. so, yeah. Yeah. Do you think there's still bad blood between one four three seven and the and the rest? Probably not, because they're Dota players and they get over. I don't know. You mean, I, I see you making a it face. It always seems like there's a lot of drama. <laughs> you know, people like okay, drama, I, I, but in reality, maybe, players players maybe normally preach it. Is not the right word. I mean, like. like all right, so you can objectively say, you know what, it's fine. You know, you can you can agree with it from a professional point of view, but somewhere. Radiant There's always going to be this hurt because someone kicked you from the team. Probably a little bit, yeah. I mean, sure. But I, I, we see so many teams kick some people and then get them back. It's, at the end of the day, you're going to be as hurt and annoyed as, as much as it doesn't affect your career. The point, you know, where, you know... So oh, but it doesn't line, mean that you can un, uh, not a, like you can enjoy the, the wins. Well, oh, I mean, you enjoy the wins anyway, aren't you? But, but you would sure, enjoy them yeah. extra. Sure. Oh, no, I mean, absolutely. Well, you know, there's no doubt about it. This is the game to go to TI. Yeah, yeah. this is... Either way, it's going to be like, you know, you, they, we're, we're going to see both of these teams have some fantastic celebration videos, I'm sure. There's going to be a lot of popping off from uh, from whichever what do you mean? side makes this I was going to say, the only way you find out who's right. Huh? This is yeah. how you find out who's right, right? Who's left, Theban who's was right. left, who's right. Yeah. Seconds, oh, come on. That's like a 10 year old me. But it's true. It's he got booted and then he's going to beat them before they go to TI. And they don't go to I TI. mean, I know you think it could happen. You, you think it is because he's got the Lycan. Right? I mean, the Lycan, Lycan. Lycan's a little scary. Lycan has literally won like every game we've come Underlord, Underlord can be pretty good sure. versus Lycan, though. The control yeah. for no, the yeah, minions, yeah, yeah. the damage, yeah. the percent damage as well. And then they've got the double double CC. You net inside the pit. You can change proc. The pit, did uh, did Theban build this team himself? Like, I'm pretty sure he did. It seemed like he so. did. I think I think it, because it like how else do these guys come together? It's got to. Be, I'm pretty sure it was Theban. What team was Zephyr on before? Because I definitely he was on Boom ID or something, right? I, I definitely casted was... him this year. I know I casted him this year. Okay, I think you might be right. I remember him playing. I who remember, who was... I remember him playing Dark Willow on a team. You can. Ch I don't know. I, I, will, remember I will check. I will he definitely check. played for one. Yeah, of the, I remember that. I'm sure. I think either you're right. Execration I think you're Boom right. ID, one of those. I don't think it was, was Execration. Who are you talking guys about? Zephyr. Zephyr. X E P H E R. I don't think Maybe it was Execration. I think Let's you're right. Let's see if I find more. Enough. Zephyr was on. Uh, I know where you saw him. He was an RQ. Oh, it was R Q. Oh, yeah. we saw him at GSC. Oh, we saw him at GSC because he was. Yes, he only. He was only joining here in the 30th of April. Yeah. All right. Because I, I remembered his name. I knew that we saw him. So I remember him playing Dark Willow. Yeah, I, I remember that I game. I remember him playing Dark Willow Remember they, as well. they gave him like all the farm? Yeah. Remember as like the four position? He was like this very farm four. Maybe. I definitely remember the Zephyr NC's playing Dark Willow. Yeah. 
So Enigma ban, they have the Naga Siren. The combo can be a bit, you know, just intimidating, threatening. Radiant team pick. They get the Jakiro to combo up with that Naga Siren. It, it has to be one of those three, right? It's either Enigma, Disruptor, or Jakiro you want to take with your Naga. It's, yeah, it's, it is good against the Lycan. Yeah. But I feel like we've seen teams try this before against the Lycan, and then the Lycan still wins because he's a Lycan. So. It, yeah, I mean, it's going to be tough. To run away with stuff. I wonder if TNC Tigress is looking at something like Shadow Fiend with that clock. We saw that out in the CIS region at least. In I don't your know. Dream is also Indonesian. Yeah, in your dreams, Indonesian. In your dreams, Indonesian. Yeah, he's like the number one uh, MMR player. Oh. Yeah, he's he been is. number one MMR he was for a while. One. He was. Yeah, he has I'm been sure ranked one in, still. in SCA, yeah. But he was for a very long time in SCA. No, it's very, yeah, very, very talented player. There's never really sort of found a team that's uh, that's really done it as, as well as this, I believe. I don't think he's ever been at TI, has he? No. no. In your dream? No. no. No, I don't think it was. No. I'm no. pretty sure it wasn't. Yeah. I mean, he's he's been in Fnatic, but only for like five days officially. And like this was in the start of 2017. Other than that, he's that. been only in teams where... You wouldn't like a lot of people wouldn't have heard. Like South He's been teams. in uh, Boom ID for a full year. Yeah. The whole of 2017, other than the quick stint with Fnatic, but that was it. And that would be the most known team, which for a lot of people wouldn't be that known at all. We casted a couple, good amount of Boom ID, right? Because Dream League no, qualifiers. I mean, they were the and team that were doing aces. very nice in some of the qualifiers. Yeah. 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 They but were very hit or miss, though. Yeah, but they and they never made it out of qualifiers. Yeah. Oh, Shadow Shaman Lycan is the, I mean, this is like a classic that people love running Shadow Shaman with Lycan. You, you're good in the laning phase with the hero. You work well with the hero for the pushing aspect, of course, and you up give the control to allow Lycan to focus fire targets. And I mean, after that last game, I mean, 1437 is playing really well today. Uh, his Oracle play was top tier. The last game, his Shadow Shaman was phenomenal. Yeah. Big fan right now. Five seconds remaining. Of his drafting and his play, how they're executing. And they're disciplined too. It's like they're not giving up these un unnecessary kills when they've got this, these drafts that they understand the way that they're supposed to keep the pace going. The motivation of TI, the pool, is working out. Some people crumble on under it. Some people thrive on it. Radiant team pick. Definitely thrive as well. Even life stealer. Okay. Is that good? I mean, you don't have a vessel. I don't know if yet. I like. I don't know if I like against the lichen. It can go kind of both ways. Anything? You can get eaten by Lycan, but if the life sealer gets really big, you eat the Lycan. Like it's 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 all about that. Like, I, like I guess they do have decent disable. The other three here is very good at holding down the Lycan. It's like the seesaw kind of thing. Like if the yeah. Lycan's you know Lycan's ahead, you destroy life sealer, but if life sealer's ahead, you yeah. I don't know how else to compare it. The razor in response. I and like that. Yeah. They can now put this Lycan in the mid lane if they want to. They put the Razor safe lane versus Razor's the Underlord. Great lane, great Razor's lane, yeah. great versus Underlord in laning phase. Great lane, great against the, the Life Steal as a whole. That's, That's a good pick. All right, so, so far, pick. I think we all agree that Tigers has a little bit of an up in terms of draft, right? Tigers looks a little bit stronger at the moment. So Ten what does TNC need to do? Like, which boxes I, still need to be ticked for them to be coming out ahead? I don't know, what do they get for RML? When I see Life Stealer versus Razor, I think you want a Vessel. Okay. You want someone that can get the life sealer on top of the razor, so you do all the damage right away I mean, just, before you start getting. Do you think late. he plays Storm again? Like he didn't have a great game last game, but it does seem good here. Sure, there's still the hex, but other than that, which other vessels could there be? I mean, they better not to tinker, so they're not afraid well, of the storm. Uh, it's like storm and puck. I think like, you don't want to play puck. Is Queen of Pain dead? DP. Oh, another DP. Maybe, maybe, maybe you just get. Oh, they banned Dragon Knight themselves. Yeah, they banned yeah. Them themselves. I mean, they have to play something like so because they they can't have something else that's going to run in and get static linked by the razor. They have to have something jumping about or keeping the range. Yeah. And they want someone that goes well in the lane versus what they assume could probably be the Death Prophet. I think it could be likened to it. These lanes could be very very different. Oh, what do they take? And CTNC's yeah. dra oh, Tigers is drafted, and I think those uh, two supports are going to have a lot of freedom. Uh, is that a vessel? I mean, it's not a vessel, but it's pretty but good. But he's here. fast. He can be speedy. Can he's be very strong in the lane, depending on who's in that lane. I think they, they've got a lot to deal it's with that Lycan in this game. Yeah, they've that, got that's a lot to deal with the Lycan. They, I they've got a good draft for the Lycan. Seeker a little bit here. But if you're having the. You can deal with the Lycan, but can you deal with the Death Prophet and the Razor? 
one of these targets is going to get ruptured in the fights. And all three of these heroes hate being ruptured because you're all okay. about mobility in team fights. Death Prophet, Razor, and Lycan, you want to be able to move around. But DP is just going to buy Yules and it's going to be fine. It's not going to get silenced. Well, no. I, but I, you I, can't I, move. But you can't can move, sure. I, I th but the I, rest can. I think TNC Predator have got a, I lot, like, a lot of control on team I like fight. Blood I believe pick, in actually. the armor Bloodseeker. Okay. I think this is... Even though it's the Razor smart, I think Predator's going to take this one. Yeah. I'm torn. Go back upstairs. I think Armel with uh, the Bloodseeker actually, for example, had the uh, first rampage at the Super Major. I think that was his hero in that one as well. Uh, we saw him be very successful on the Bloodseeker in the past. They need to win this game if they want to have a shot of going to TIH because this is a best of three. If they lose here, it means the Tigers is going to be the second team out of Southeast Asia to make it to Vancouver, make it to TIH. So Predator need to be tying the score. Let's see if they can. Over to uh, ODM Fogged. Hello. Oh. Hello. I think uh, we're live. So yes, well. we're good. We're, we're live. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to game War 2. Game two yeah, of oh, Tigers versus you Predators. Just, you can just stop talking this about is Odie Pixel. I'm here with Fogged, and we're ready so to take you through this one. We're going to have a bit of fun here from both sides. We've got a Lycan lineup from yeah. Tiger and Hello. So uh, it is going to be what? K playing the Lycan uh, on the sideline. And uh, over on Predator, it is uh, that uh, the Bloodseeker final pick for Armel. And as I say, I think there's a lot of ways. Oh, for them to uh, hold down <laughs> and beat down to upon this, this, yeah. the Lycan. But there are other two scary cores thrown into the mix with that Razor and DP. So I think it's going to be a close one unless Armel really goes off on the Bloodseeker. Yeah, which he could do. He could definitely do it. I'm just, I think they're waiting to see, get some information. They're both kind of playing around mid. Death Prophet has mid items. I've seen this Death Prophet versus Bloodseeker matchup quite a lot. The DP honest. loses, right? The DP loses yeah. majority of the time. Just because the side lanes get pressured and Bloodseeker just starts getting absolutely ridiculous and damage and movement speed that you can run down this DP. So we'll see how that applies. I do think that, I mean, Razor, Razor's top versus the life seer. That should yeah. be able to slow down Raven. So Tigers looks like they got the lanes that they want. But that being said, I don't think TNC is too unhappy with their lanes because they got the standard lanes. They've got their carry in the top lane. They've got Bloodseeker versus the Death Prophet. And they've got Underlord, of course, on bottom. Let's see. The bottom lane is all about pressure. Just spam your spells. Spam Firestorm, spam Riptides. Get these heroes nice and low so that your Bloodseeker gets thirst once he's got level 2. We'll see what 1437 can do this game with the Shaman. Obviously, had an excellent game last game. Oh, Tim man. is using that Riptide to secure the last hit on the, on the uh, range creep, making sure that the high base damage of Shadow Shaman doesn't apply. He will block, body block the pull camp as well. So they can make sure to keep that uh, that pressure applied. So once they start getting atrophy stacks, this is where Underlord should build a farm in theory quite well versus Lycan. And we already start seeing that mid matchup, Armel. He's been using aggressive glyph, hoping that 458 will miss this last hit on the tower, but he doesn't miss it, he gets it. Gonna be quite the one to watch there in the top lane. So far, Raven not being uh, not being disrupted too much by the fact there's a razor in the lane. Let's say he's got the Jakira by his side, spamming out both the razor and the clockwork, making sure space is there for Raven to farm. Oh, so far, it has been. Nice, yes. Armel's farming look perfect, and he's got the two points in the thirst now too. So any pressure that gets applied. He just does even better in that mid lane, and yeah, I mean this death prophet's really gonna hurt, really gonna suffer. That's bomb lane. K's farm. Not too, not too bad at all against the, the underlord. Is this? Uh, they sh they shouldn't really get kills down here yeah. on either side. You got this enough free gen on the lichen that yeah. you, you feel fine against the spam. It's like maybe if Tim's like walks under tower or something and he gets shackled or an extra rotation comes from the clockwork, then they can get kills on either the Naga or the Underlord, but yeah, kills down here are pretty unlikely. If 1437 steps super far out of position, then yeah, he can get netted, riptide, high atrophy damage. But this is like TNC is just trying to get them low so that Armel can dominate that mid lane, which he already is.
Tim keeps trying to do that pull, but the wolves actually have disrupted it. Both of the times that he has tried. And the Razor will now, with the two points in the link especially, will start to slow down Raven a little bit. Okay, now yeah, we'll see. I mean, in terms of the length, it looks to be very static at the moment. It's either side. I mean, I guess what sort of once the clock hits uh, at level 3, 4, we can expect to see Zephyr move around. But other than yeah. that, everybody just sticking to the lanes. As it tends to be, it's going to be like the four hero that tries to make moves and is the killer. Yeah. To really put that pressure out. But neither lanes are uh, really in sort of a danger of, of lives being lost. Maybe until that, that sort of level 6 comes online in the mid lane for Armel, we might see him. Have to get aggressive. He's gonna get the six much faster than the death prophet. Oh does. yeah, he's the nice. Okay, nice little offensive glyph there, Armel. Taking a good chunk of jam damage while walking up for the last hits, but we'll get enough to secure him some health. He also has a salve just in case too. Jam out. Twenty-four to twelve against four, five, eight, fifteen for one. Or yeah. Not. I mean, as soon as level 6 happens, Armel's probably going to try to go for a kill onto this Death Rocket. He's got like a full level advantage. Top lane. Getting your dream, consistently getting those near max duration static links off. I think I'd like to see Zephyr make a move. As soon as he hits level 3, try making the move toward mid lane to try to bait the Bloodseeker. Maybe to use that rupture and you can counter gank. They're looking to chase down 1437, but they won't die for the tower. He drops very low, though. The high damage from the Atrophy. Tim's walks oh. in for the Riptide. We'll find him. Oh. That vision from the first. I was going to say, maybe if it was a sort of lapse of the mind there from 1437. As, yeah, they were, they were always going to see him. They were always going to see him. So a very easy kill for Predator to just waltz in underneath the tower and claim. Armel is six now off of this creep. Death Prophet always had the TP, of course, in case that does happen. But now, I mean, Armel's got... Some, some really comfortable control of this mid lane. Okay. Uh, he's going to be left on his own for a little bit. As uh, 37 makes the walk back to lane. He's still managing to, so as I say, farm pretty well down there. 26 CS. Yeah. In the top lane, the, the denies are starting to rack up. You are really starting to see sort of the... The expected uh, Razor versus Life, so the way it's uh, going to go down with that level advantage on the Razor. I'm surprised how well Raven's been last hitting here, but now he's starting to get chased out. He's got to actually pop his mango, get that open wounds to distance himself. He will be okay. But now the damage on the towel. The tower will be there a bit there for in your dream. In lane. Cuckoo, arm out, looking towards 458. They've got the rupture into the blood right. Is it enough? No, stick charges and siphons there. This is going to be the turnaround players. 1437 comes in with a the shackle. They look towards Armel. Quick blast, not enough. Armel himself with the stick charges will be fine. Lots of rotations coming in for that. They do save the DP, but they don't get that return kill onto Armel. As Armel is allowed to retreat. They may get Cuckoo though. 458. Trying to slow him down with the siphon. Blood right from Armel. Will potentially put the two off from trying for the kill. And uh, indeed does save Cuckoo. Bottom lane certainly starting to get more scary. Tim is in Sam H at the point where they can cut the creeps, really yeah. keep the pressure on to K. The damage is starting to add up. Underlord has 55. 1437 is getting pretty scared that he can get dove. They have expended, I think, all, all six of the mangoes they had bottom. So that's where they were trying to apply pressures. Three mangoes were used on Tim's, three as well on Sam H. There's a rotation coming in from Cuckoo down bottom as well. They want to try and set up onto K. K. AFK at the moment. Stand still. In they go. K. He's gone. I think that was Cuckoo using a mango on Tim's there so that he would have the mana because he didn't have any remaining. So them able to get that net off with that rotation of Cuckoo. They shut down the Lycan. And they're just leaving Raven. Raven on his own. They're like, you're actually farming pretty okay. Sure. You're getting slowed down by the Razor, but we can't really help you up there with just a Jikiro. So they make the aggressive move anyway. Which will always benefit the Bloodseeker as well. Armel almost level 8 in comparison to level 6 on that Death Prophet. 
Let's see this replay again. Okay, look at him. He's just sitting there. Yeah, look, look, he just mangoes Tim's, and yep. Okay. Was okay. Just, just taking a, a moment there to think about his existence. Was he using uh, courier? I think he was buying a ring. He, he must have been right? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, always good fun think, to see. Think he dies anyway. They'll probably just dive. Sure. A little bit deeper for that, and there's not the greatest protection. So smoke comes out. They've got level 6 DP. They've got the exorcism. They look like they want to try to get something out of it. Maybe a kill into a tower. Ideally on the Bloodseeker. But they turn their way after that. Nuke comes out after they see the Bloodseeker pushing the mid lane. They make their way toward top to maybe try to find Raven here. The long wraparound. They get the ward behind the tower too. They know that Armel has come up here. Dream has the TP. He's baiting them. He is juking them. Yeah, 458 has turned up with the exorcism and out. TNC Predator, they've got to get out of it. They've got the shackles from 1437 out onto Armel as well as 458 coming across with the ghost. The static link from In Your Dream racking up. As Armel will lay the blood right down, but it does not matter. They have more than enough damage to claim the life of the Bloodseeker too. Very nice smoke play. They smoke and not, they don't just go for and, the kill, right? And now they Sam smoke, they put the ward. They're going to get Tim's as well. Sam H, he will be able to rift out. But they make the most of that ghost usage indeed. Up and down Damn. the map. 4-5-8. Very good map read. And I, I just love how they don't they don't rush it. They don't rush this play. They put the ward down. They see the Bloodseeker TP and they take their time. Deep Ward's also placed out by Predator. So they can look to make those similar moves. Oh, a shackle. Oh, no, not too fortunate. As uh, in the dream, actually laughs at 437. That, that's just me. Did he insta-cancel it himself? Or? Uh, no, he shackled uh, an illusion. Or oh, creep. Okay. I forget. It's early. He, he didn't shackle the real one. Radiance bottom, tower is under attack. bottom, Armel, Sam H. They will be able to claim this tower. See the mirror movements again, of course, happening. That 10 minute mark, both sides want to put playing on opposite sides of the map for the most part. And they are giving Tim's the lane. Level six already on Naga. Clockwork only level four at the moment. Man, Zephyr is, is looking for Tim's. Oh, and he's found him. He's got him in the cogs. Battery assault as well, but uh, it doesn't look like any of his mates want to come over and help him get the kill. Oh, Maybe they don't need to. There's a creep wave there. Oh, he's in trouble now. He's a little deep, Zephyr. Ah, uh, that was... That was... I don't think that was ever going to happen, chasing down that level 6 Naga Siren, but he, if, they, he thought it would. If he was level 5 on clock, he might have had the damage with level 3 Battery Assault, but only level 4, level 2 Battery Assault, not enough versus this tanky Naga. Gives a free kill. Cuckoo. He gets... He uses the Tome of Knowledge on the Clockwork, so now level 6. Now he's got more than enough damage. 458 will secure it. I used the set up. It's top Tim's. Yeah, continue to get the space to they get the D ward. spirit vessel. They do get the D ward down bottom too. They saw the Jakiro, you know, walking through their jungle, so. Oh yeah. They assumed there'd be a ward down there, and they are right to assume that. Except for gets the D ward. It's a little bit of a slowdown coming down, coming out here now. TNC content with farming. They have Tim's farming top, Armel farming jungle, Sam H occupying bottom, doing Underlord things. It means Raven's kind of lacking a home to find, to farm For as sure. this lifestealer. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah, I saw that lane at the start where, as you say, he did sort of be better out that lane than, than maybe expected because it is against a Razor. It's going to be hard, but uh, he's still got to find some way to, to now, sort of catch back up. Now they're moving around. Now they're yeah. like, okay. Sam H, you're an Underlord, you're the tower defender. You yeah. should be playing around the mid lane, you should be playing wherever the Death Prop and Lycan are set up. Let Raven take these unoccupied lanes. So he does farm a bit down bottom. So be very careful though, 458 is in the side, but he does get the rage and the TP off. That could have been scary there for a second. The silence was available from the Death Prophet and his teammates were coming over. So we've got top lane, armor, oh, rupture, straight up onto K. Tim's coming in as well. Okay, can he actually escape this? He is going to pop the shapeshift. 
Pop the stick charges. He needs help, though, and no help is coming. So K will fall. Tim's in armor, catching him out with the gank. No playing, way to escape. Playing Lycan versus Bloodseeker is very difficult. Yeah. You have to have your teammates pretty much playing around you at any of those situations. Mid lane Zephyr does have the hook shot back up. He sees a chance to get him, but he's, he, they, they have got eyes on him. They want to try to get Sam H, because Sam H is just ruining their push mid that they want to be able to apply right now. He's just spamming the Firestorm, which is giving a lot of space to Raven to get this armlet at a good timing, and also Armel to get a Radiance at a pretty good timing. He was actually not doing the greatest on the Bloodseeker after that one death that he had, and then just completely caught back up once he got those kills. On up top, Zephyr will find Cuckoo. With that hook chop, gets the, the Jakira out low. That ward again, getting them another kill. So Armel does lead the farm. Razor very close behind that Bloodseeker. I mean, Sam H is... Sam H is being such a nuisance right now. Like, they want this mid tower so badly so they can get this information, the way to be able to pierce into the enemy jungle, but Sam H just perched here, spamming nonstop. Pretty much has. Does he have the Crimson Guard finished? I didn't see if the. No, the Buckler's not done just yet. But very close to having a full Crimson Guard. Should be very, very nice versus at least a Lycan. They're looking to gank this Underlord. They want to kill him, get this tower. Maybe they might just settle for a Jakiro, but that is not the ideal Radiant kill. They want a core. Under if this can lead them into a tower, though, they'll be happy. Deep Ward's placed out. Attack. They know that he's up there. They know that Cuckoo's in the tree lines. They're spending a lot of time right now, though. And they got the vision. Oak shot back up. Zap. Bit of a repeat of what we just saw. And he goes on to the Jakiro. Cuckoo tries to hide nice and deep. The battery assaults there. Cuckoo. Cannot breathe a single ounce of fire as Zephyr chain stuns him up there with the mini stuns. Haven't seen those cast animations, and the setup is there for them to take the tower. So they couldn't get mid, they'll look elsewhere. Yeah, they'll get the tower, but at the same time, Sam H starts to push a little bit up towards the high ground in mid, and tier 2 bottom is pretty much dead already now. So they had to spend a lot of time for that, but now Sam H has stepped up a bit too far. Can Zephyr close the gap? Oh! Didn't, did that look like it? That looked like he was inside of the cog. No. That looked like it. it hit I him. mean, it looked very close. But uh, not okay. not getting the cancel on the TP that. I, I thought that he was actually. Let's get a replay. We can get a replay probably. I mean, that one looked like I'm he was. I'm sure we can check it out. We can check out the replay. That was crazy. I guess maybe just the big, the big unit, like the way the. I mean, Cog's Underlord be looks. Be, well, Underlord was, also looks huge, but his his actual. Sure. The hitbox is smaller. We're seeing it because it, exactly, yeah, because it's a big model. But it looks a little bit like that cog is literally like oh, inside okay. of him, right? That was actually inside him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's fine. We're gonna have a few more patches before TI. It's cool. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like that. I, I thought that one was hit him. I don't know. Maybe the wolves uh, interact. The wolves were kind of in the way somehow or something. I don't know. It looks strange. Yeah, I'm sure it's probably just lag. I'm sure. <laughs> It was, it was a feature. Zephyr it's a feature. walks into Tim's on the high ground. There's a shrine there and some more teammates. Will he clean up the Naga? He will not and he will pay with his light. That was the fresh relic as well for Armel. And now it's pretty much a Radiance. All right. Good timing indeed on the Bloodseeker. I'm a little scared right now for Tigers. They're not applying as much pressure as they'd like to be with this Lycan and Death Prophet. They want to ideally be taking all these tier 1s nice and early, but Sam H has literally just been sitting in the mid lane for 6 minutes. He's been chilling, he's Spamming been farming. Firestorm. He's having a great time. He's a Crimson Guard, level 10. He is more than happy sitting here and with the pace that the game is going. Yeah, I mean, Raven is, Raven's also like, thank you so much for this, guys. You know, buy me time. I was versus a Razor. You know how this goes. I'm a life stealer. This is uh, certainly looking to be a little more challenging than game one was for Tigers. As Definitely. Predator, they, it, it, it's just a much easier draft for them to play as well. You know, last time they had this sort of bristle. Bri you know, anytime you see bristle and axe on the same team, you know it's going to be, it's going to be have to be something a little different for them to get the victory. It's not sort of your classic position one and position three. Yeah. Uh, at least together, sure, in, in sort of separate scenarios. But it's a little weird to have them both in the same draft and 
And as we saw, it did not did not work out. But Look this time this. round, this is much more fluid. Oh, Mel Blood Seeker, Raven, most of that. Yeah, they're good to go. Oh, the wolves. I actually get hit by the Radiance for a second there. I don't okay. know if Tiger's noticed, though. Uh, I think in your dream to ping it out. Okay. Someone was pinging. Zephyr will head forward as uh, he looks to be the one to tank the smoke. They're not really going in onto him, though. Okay, they got silenced on two heroes. They were a little bit okay. afraid. And yeah, even Zephyr's not going to fall. He's going to be able to get himself back to safety. So indeed, they, they were aware and they were able to keep everyone away safely from that, that movement. But TNC, though... They, they said, well, we don't get a kill. We'll, we'll just put pressure onto the tower. We're beefy enough to keep pushing in if we want to oh. do so. They use the exorcism. And they use the shapeshift. Predator is just going to disengage. I mean, at least they've finally sort of found the only to get the tower if they want. So that's something. But as you say, I mean, they, they get the tier once they wanted it. They finally get it. But uh, yeah, indeed, the like running around like a, a crazed wolf as he, he just can't find the only. But they get the tower. They get the tower. Now they're going to be on the back foot for quite a while, though. No sure, shape TNC shift, know that they haven't no got exorcism. This That's 100 yeah. seconds where Predator can play on the aggressive completely. That's majority of their damage coming out from Tigers. I really doubt they're going to try to take any of these fights in the next minute or so. Radiant structures are fortified. Indeed. They will lose their tier one tower in turn. Pins on the side. Finding 1437, 1437. Oh, gets it into the sidelines there. Raven now gets linked, and he will get pushed away from that. Quick little juke into the tree lines there. Just using that fog on the Shadow Shaman. Doesn't allow him to die. Look at this. This is three holding, though, whilst both side lanes are being farmed and pushed. Yep. Predator, you know, the Tigers have K up top. They got Zephyr down bottom. Predator did have the full five-man mid for that. Important thing is that Tigers didn't lose anyone while they have these ultis yeah. down. 60 more seconds until they are back up, though. And Predator will use that farm to... That time to just farm up. I mean, Lifestealer. Tide net worth with the Lycan. I think Predator is pretty happy with the state of the game. Radiant are scanning. Now, the big thing is, can they contest the Roshan in the next 30 seconds? When Tigers make their next move with level 2 Exorcism and what should be book 3 soon, can they defend that Rosh? They've got the Naga to deal with it. The song is coming out. I think they think that they're Roshing already because they threw the scan out. They're actually not doing it just yet. They might get some kills still, though. They'll try and look to open on the side. They've got the Blood Ride, the Root, onto 1437. He'll be surrounded and he'll get taken down. PKB's out from in your dreams. He looks to chase. Dark Rip and Sam H looking to get them out. It's actually going to be cancelled. Sam H says, we can fight this. And uh, evidently, he cannot. He's dead. As the rest of TNC walk off, maybe a, a bit of miscommunication there as he did. As, as, yeah, they, they stopped that Dark Rip. It did seem like it, yeah. As they, I guess they... I didn't see where he was Dark Rifting to. Maybe he was Dark Rifting towards the base, and TNC as a yeah. whole would have felt it would be more harmful to, to save the Underlord, but be taken all the way back to the Fountain when they do want to still stay in this vicinity around the pit. So they're I like... I think it's the Rush, yeah. They want yeah. to have control around that Rush pit, and yeah. they don't want to get so far away versus like when they have Death Prophet. Yeah. Sure, like the Shadow Shaman was, ult was used, but the Death Prophet ulti in that mm. Rush pit is still... Yeah, well, very the, the ride arrived, but the, the destination was off. So yeah. Yeah, they, they turn it down. <laughs> they, they want to stay about. Predator still having that lead. 2k advantage. They're getting Tight. close to the BKB on the Bloodseeker too. That's going to give Armel all the liberty in the fights just to run around and not be so afraid of all this constant damage that's flying around. Well, what do you think about that as well? I mean, the, the Tranquils on the Death Prophet. Oh. I, mean, I've not, I haven't seen that. <laughs> oh, a little bit it's not an accidental build, is it? It's not. I mean, no, not definitely not an accidental build. I don't know. Yeah, you see... Well... No. No. No, no, it's not an accidental build. I guess just I mean, if he doesn't get hit and he's ruptured in the back lines, the Tranquil will still apply, so he gets that extra regen. As long as he doesn't get hit, if he's sure. not auto-attacking and stuff yeah. too, it'll give him a little extra regen. I don't know. It's It's definitely weird. You don't see it too much on core heroes because you tend to be one of attacking and you're going to be attacked in team fights. But he will be able to sustain if it's only spells thrown on him. At least. 
So they're going for the rush. They've got the medallion as well on this clockwork. Deep guilty. TNC does our uh, predator does not have the song available. This should be free for Tiger. Yeah, they really do prioritize this, this rush on the old. So uh, we saw last game that it really does pay off. You have to, to favor Roshan in that heavy. No messing around, just grabbing the Aegis, grabbing the Roche kill, and no chance for Predator to contest. So JJ gave an update because we're noobs. Uh, the range creep actually took the cog hit in the mid lane when the cog looked like it was supposed to hit the Underlord. That one uh -huh. cog that was supposed to hit, it hit a creep. Okay, thank you, JJ. Thank you, JJ. That makes sense. That does make sense. I was there very confused, that, otherwise. That... I didn't see the creep get pushed, though. That makes sense. There we go. Maybe I'm blind. Can we, we can probably see the replay again. No, Let's we go. don't need to see the replay. I want to see the replay. Can we play the replay again, Jensen? No. I, want, I want to see the creep. Don't listen, no I want to see the creep that messed it up. Here we go. Look, look. All right. We'll Who's the creep, the creep that messed, that messed it up? It's the range creep right there. It does push. But it looks like the other cog. Eh, whatever. Okay. It happened. The other cog did look very close. It looked close. Whatever. But whatever. Well, let's we'll see it again. Yeah, let's see it again. Let's see <laughs> how close was <laughs> That it I, looks I mean, it was close. still. I mean, yeah. Did it hit well, the catapult? One of the cogs. Did it hit the catapult? I don't know. Whatever. It hit the did it hit, can we see it? Did it Wait, hit stop, the catapult? Just stop. Okay. We got, we got to investigate Aegis these things. Aegis on Tiger. Yeah, but who cares? That happened a while. This is live bug fixing. <laughs> and we just found out there wasn't a bug, so well done, Val. Well done, JJ. The only bug was us. Feels bad now. We were wrong. We need our creators to update us. Predator is smoked up. They've got the fresh BKB on Armel. They're, in, they're going into Aegis, though. Can they catch Tigers off guard? They're waiting oh. for someone else besides the Aegis carrier. They see Zephyr. They got him. Eyes popped down. Bloodbride as well. Zephyr doesn't stand a chance. And buyback straight away. As can Tigers get a jump back in. The hook shot only on the illusions. Set the battery itself. So now, shapeshift as well from K. He's going to look oh. to go straight towards Tims, but Tims has the sock. So the BKBs are up for In Your Dream and 458 as they'll punch down Tims. The singer has fallen. And now Raven getting chased as well. Can they finish off this life dealer? The ice pop! He's going to get saved. Raven will be out of there. The ice pop holds back the three of them. Now they'll turn their attention towards Cuckoo as the dragon may pay for this. Crimson Guard popped by the Underlord, but it won't save Cuckoo. Armel going crazy though, gets the double kill, looks towards 458, the Rift, will he get Sam H out in time? No Sam H, you don't want to go home, do you? Oh, they do. He does. He does. The Bloodseeker probably didn't, but... I can't believe they actually bailed Raven out of that. I, that Ice Path. He got, it wasn't just the, it was Tim's as well. So Raven Sorry. got full linked, the double BKBs come out during the song from the Death Prophet and the Razor. So they're chasing him. He actually hops into Tim's pretty much max distance. Tim's dies right afterwards, but gets him just a surge forward well, down and then bottom. the ice path. That was clutch. They found him. They found that Underlord. Can they kill him? Yes, they can. They'll drop the wards down as well. The there. It's going to cost them the life of the Razor. Yeah, those are. this is costly deaths. 1, 4, 3, 7, more than likely dying as well. Oh, they have with the Bloodseeker and his Radiance. He'll make them work for it, though. Just a little bit. Armel oh, getting a lot out of this fight. Four blade mail. 4k lead as a whole. The tips coming out aggressively from Tim's. They're feeling they're feeling good now. Their Bloodseeker is having a phenomenal game. Raven also surviving during that entire team fight. Almost has a Deso finished up now too. Looking strong from Predators this time around. They're dealing with the Lycan. They certainly are. As we've seen, it's just been pretty much impossible for the Lycan to have much of an impact at all in these fights. The Crimson Guard, the damage block, the, the kite ability, the, the TNC's line of pass, and just the control. Yeah. They they really have drafted the solution for the Lycan. I mean, it really was like... I mean, the game is, game is still very close, but the, this Bloodseeker last pick was like the solution that Predator absolutely needed. This way to just rupture one of these three cores, either the Razor, the Death Prophet, or the Lycan in the fights, and just be able to not allow them to use that maneuverability was probably the best pick they could have done. That was the first death of In Your Dream too, right? And Raven got the kill, so 518. Yep. Gold. And that, I mean, this is a very farm razor. Level 17 as well. Whoa. Zephyr, he got it. Got that illusion. Got it. B 
BKB. I think it's been early on Kane. They do need that so they can have the three cores or waltz in it with the BKB during, during the song and such. Yeah. Otherwise, he just gets held back every time. They yeah. have to be careful how they use their BKBs, though, also on the fights. If they only one of them pops the BKB, then they can get netted and isolated. And there's a lot of things single single target. Yeah, they, they have to all pretty much go at the same time. Yeah, all three have to yeah. pop BKB and run in. Ah, oh, smoke. Wrap around, silence. On to three. Very nice. In your dreams, shoves himself into the Hurricane Pike, gets the tally link onto the lifesteal, but Raven's out to the side. Jumps in Samage, looks for the safe ride home. Armel goes for the BKB TP. He'll make it out. In fact, pretty much all of them just Cuckoo, who gets left behind. How many BKBs were used? Just, just Death Prophets. Razor actually held held this. That silence coming out by the DP there. Yeah. The Man, perfect the kind of jump they could get. They wanted more, but yeah. Predator just had to instantly disengage. Getting Raven out there. Raven's proving to be quite slippery for, for Tigers to hold on to. Lots of ways for Predator to save the Lifestealer. Dude, he's the so Dark farmed. Rift, the Song of the Siren. He's so farmed on the Lifestealer now. Yeah. He's, he hasn't died. Sure, he had the bad lane matchup versus the Razor, but not dying in any of these situations has put him to the point where yeah, FaZe, S and Y, Deso, he's got pretty much the same net worth as a Razor. It's getting very tough indeed for Tigers. We've got to try and fight. But again, they have to sort of wait the 70 seconds. They need the... Not just the wards, but the exorcism as well, really, to have yep. a chance at uh, having the damage required to fight Predator. I think the biggest thing for Tigers is really just they need that Rosh. When you have a Lycan lineup, Death Prophet like this, and you're versus this type of lineup from Predators, you need Rosh on so badly. If Predators is ever able to actually take Rosh from Tigers, they're in massive disarray. They already are kind of starting to lose a lot of their momentum that they, they kind of had, but they can't lose this next Rosh. And I think that might be why TNC did opt for doing this Naga so early. Oh, Boundary Tim. runes. Uh, Tim's. Over the set of Zephyr goes for the hook shot. They do have 4-5-A moving in with the BKB. But the Siphon onto Cuckoo. Cuckoo turns, gets the old out. Cuckoo looking to try and bring down the clockwork, and he will. Cuckoo does lose his life from returns. It's one for one. Make that a two for one. As Inyo Dream just gets around the BKB not going to save him. Shape's just been popped by Kate. But it's just the three of them alive here they cannot afford to try and fight against tnc predator they've got to try and run but 1437 will not be able to get himself away to safety as predator take another team fight it's really starting to get out of hand they i mean the rupture he throws the rupture on razor in your dream stands there just like oh my god i can't really do anything waits for his bkb as long as possible pops it right before he dies and yeah then he's he's just pretty much dead there's too much damage coming in and here we go time to maybe push the base tnc he even takes the rupture damage talent. That's to show, like, this pick, it's to counter their mobility. We talked about it several times, but he's really emphasizing on that. There's this tower, and potentially Barracks look to be in a bit of a rough situation. They do have Exorcism up. But still two people down. 458 is going to move in, though. No, nonetheless, immediately the Dark Rift comes out. The Cog sort of pushing them apart, but he's able to get back in. He'll take them all home to safety. Easy Rift. Despite Zephyr's best attempts to, to split them apart with the cogs, he gets everybody back and back home. But they do protect the racks with that defense. Yeah. But now they know. Now Predator is like, okay. They've used Exorcism's ghosts. the only way that they've actually been able to take any fights. And Roshan is up. And Rosh is up. Yeah. So this is their this is their time to shine on Predator. Even though they kinda they have been for quite a while now, they can take advantage of this long duration ulti, which is majority of Tigers actual damage in the fights. As they're ready to move straight over into the pit. I mean, I mean, Armel was scouting it out. Tigers, they do still have wards and shapeshift, but I don't know if they want to try and risk taking a fight around the pit. As this is a relatively easy to see. He's going to get spotted out by the rocket flare. The thing is that they can do this and be full HP because they have open wounds. Yeah. So they break the Lincolns with Blood Ridge, then open wounds it right afterwards. Most of them should stay pretty sustained. They're heading in the general direction. A little DP ult though. Not for a long time. This is so hard to try and contest. This Song of the Siren. They have to BKB and going at the same time. Here we go. Moving forward into the pit in your dream. The whole of them popping the BKBs. Can they get the kills? 1437 has the checkers, but there's the song. Raven able to rage himself away. They've lost the Underlord. 
as Raven will be able to kite out the shapeshift from K. Cuckoo comes back in, oh drops the ult to try and force them out of the pit, but that's going to be Cuckoo dead too. And now, Yule's up. Tim's, he gets surrounded. Tim's, he's going to fall as well. Tigers taking the fight around the pit without the exorcism, but they still manage to, to push Predator out of there. The rush is incredibly low too. Both teams just really want to stay perched started. Sam H is up in 20 seconds. They've, He's the crucial one for Predator, but exorcism's going to be back they've also. They've just picked up a full Shiva's guard as well on the, on the Death Prophet. Just having these wolves down, they get this extra vision that allows them to see in the pit. Even throwing a dominated melee creep in there. Just trying to keep tabs of it. All of Predator is back alive now. And, but as you said, the big thing is they pushed it on to this point where Exorcism's, Exorcism's there. Back. Yep. They've and got the, BKBs, the ghosts. BKBs are available. So 458. Is he going to... Yes, he's going to pop it straight away. And he goes, ready to pop it. Ready to push. And he's going to get silenced by the blood right, but he's just going to stand his ground, do the damage. Raven heads in with the rage, trying to disrupt this in your dream as well, though, with the BKB back up. Static link on the Raven will be broken as Raven gets out to the side, but there's the Roshan and Aegis into the hands of in your dream as Tigers get both of them. On the high ground, Zephyr's in K, trying to fight around with Armel. Dark Risk is going to be there from Sam H. He's looking to take them home, but Armel, he, could he get in range in time? Doesn't look like he wants to. Raven and Armel will stick around as Raven focuses down K. The Lycan's gone, but back towards the mid lane. Tim's caught out. He's down for a minute. They get the Roshan. They get the Aegis. They do lose their Lycan. Maybe they'll lose more. Rupture's on to 458, but the heal from the Exorcism bringing him back up to pretty much full. Armel, can he still try and chase this down with the help of Raven? Raven looks towards 1437, 1437. Oh, nice force staff by it your dream. It saves him. Gets him out of the side there. I believe that was in your dream coming in with a hurricane power. But they get oh. the, out as well. The, the great escape there from Tiger. And what what a play for them to make around that pit. That they was... went into that whole sort of two minutes of play without exorcism. Predator having everything at their availability. But Predator couldn't get Roshan. Tigers pushed them out of the pit. They get the Roche. Sure, the only downside is they lose the Lycan. But at the end of the day, considering the state of the game, this is massive for Tigers. Definitely. I mean, they they don't allow Predator to take the Aegis. Yeah. We mentioned how important that really is there for them to at least make sure that they get it and Predator does not. You're playing with a Lycan lineup. You ideally want... Lycan and Death Prop, you want to have that Aegis on your side. Lincoln's now finished on Raven, so he can have a little bit more liberty in the fights to not get linked. Because I think in most of the fights, he's getting linked for at least like 80, 80 plus has, damage. He has to back damage. out straight away. Yeah. I think that's why we're seeing. Sure, there's been 16 kills. He's only been involved in seven of them because yeah. a lot of the times he's having to just separate himself from the team fight. So you're right. The Lincoln's is going to make a big difference. Watching these wolves, scouting out Predator over and over again. XY's been very keen on keeping that micro up so that he can at least get vision with these. I mean, in your, in your dream, has uh, he's pretty much got a full AC. So they've got a full AC that. and they've got a Shiva's Guard. A lot of damage mitigation in these fights. Sam H as well. I mean, the Crimson Guard, like you mentioned, Pipe, probably going to have a Crimson Guard very soon. Or have a uh, Guarding Griefs. I keep saying, keep doing that. Guarding Griefs to be able to remove those silences coming up from the Death Prophet, which will help quite a lot. How's all our BKBs looking? BKB on Bloodseekers, five. I think Death Prophets was five. Razors is five. Lycans should be longer. Lycans is eight. Zephyr. Quick shot at the ready bomb. Oh, it's onto the wall. Might still work out though with a cold push back onto the Chikiro. TNC, I think let's try to take this fight. Raven, he is moving in. Get the root in your dream and the, the, the clock falling kind of low, but the BKB is out in the midst of it all from 458 as he gets off the exorcism. 1437, looking to have the control on the side. He gets the hex and shackle down onto the target as your dream comes in with the BKB and now manages to get the static link down onto Raven. Raven jumps inside of Armel. The static link persists. They have lost two this time around on Tigers. Can Predator get everyone out there? No, though, they can't. They'll lose the Jakiro. So two for one. A lot of ults being expended here by Tigers. So Predator, they'll be fine with this. They've, they've made them use an Exorcism. They've made them drop Serpent Wards. They only lost a Jakiro for it. So Predator sort of taking back control. And, and we're sort of seeing still the issue that there are these calls like Raven that are very hard for Tigers to actually control. Yeah. I mean, Armel's so speedy in the fights too. Yeah. 
and they have to just they still have to watch out for all the damage mitigation. Sam H there, they threw him in the air when he started rifting. I actually like that play, right? They throw this Underlord when he's getting close to the end of the Dark Rift, so it's like, not only do you have to run close to him to make sure you get ported up, but he also can't choose to cancel and re-engage. So that's kind of That is true, there. yeah, you, you force him to- you force him to get to out of there. actually get out of there, yeah. It's kind of cool. I don't see people do that too often. No, but it's, it's certainly something to bear in mind. These wolves just keep scouting TNC uh, predators over some... and over again. He's just sitting them on top of Armel. Few valuable info. They do now have a. Uh, they have a jam out on, on the Shakira. On Shakira. So. Okay. He must have just gotten it. Yeah, literally, literally, literally just, just bought it. it. Literally okay, just okay. got it. Yeah. So now they'll they'll be able to deal with a little better with those wolves hunting them down. Yeah. I think they, they kind of need I think these wolves yeah. have really been disrupting them, trying to get the jump over and over again. Oh, well, here we go. They are going to try and take the fight at Predator, but there is a ward down Whoop. for Tigers. So they have decent vision around this area. This is an dream. Aegis Razor. They'll certainly have a good shot of taking them down once. The question is, do, do Tigers want to fight around this? They don't have ghosts. It's a hard fight to take, and they won't. In fact, Predator themselves seeming uh, seemingly a little scared about going on In Your Dream a second time. Wards are back there. The ice path. And again, the forces getting K nicely out to the side. Doesn't even get hit by the blood right. They're killing the book three though. That's the book already gone, as well as the dominated creep. How long till goes? Ghosts are back up. They've got yeah. everything. They have got the ults. So just lacking the book. Raven's just in. He is. I mean, he's, he's going on to this, this lichen. Okay, has to put the shape shift. They do get the shackles, but the force brings them out to the side. Tim's trying to come forward. The BKB is already out there on Tigers. SK trying to focus down Cuckoo, Cuckoo healed up by the Greaves. They'll turn around now, look towards 5458 as 458 uses himself out Savage. He's trying to take them out of the fight as it seems, but Cuckoo's been separated. Zephyr will manage to play around with him with the Cogs, push him out to the side. But all in all, again, Predator, they force these fights. They make Exorcism come out at 458 and then they disengage. They only are losing Cuckoo on the Jakiro for for the usage of the exorcism. So Predator, they're, again, they're happy with keeping the state of the game like this. Yeah. Because now, now they know they can go and try and fight in 4, 5, 8. Without the ghost, it's not very scary at all. I think once Raven has Nullifier, these fights are really going to start changing. And then yeah. we're going to see this, this Death Prophet actually die in these situations. Because the problem that happens is they had the Focus Fire, Death Prophet... Uh, 4, 5, 8 dropped extremely low in the fight, and then he gets the Yules off, then the Ghost Scepter follow up. When they have Nullifier, they're going to be able to remove that and not allow the second one to get used afterwards. Either remove the Yules or remove the Ghost Scepter and then prevent the secondary one that's protecting him. Because he would have died in that fight if he did, wasn't able to use those. So I think we're, we're really going to have to keep tabs. Once Raven gets this Nullifier, that's going to really change the way they can kill and prevent all this exorcism damage that's causing quite a problem in the fights. What's Armel? Armel's gonna just be going for Bash here, it looks like. But both sides are seeming to have a lot of tankiness coming in. So many of these auras coming into play. The AC, like you mentioned, the Vlads. All these different ones. So also, KYXY will be having a nullifier pretty soon too to prevent the defensive BKBs coming out from the side of TNC Predator. But you saw when he started getting focus fired by that Life Stealer. This Lycan is really he does not get that tanky. To pieces. The BKB wears off, he gets Spirit Vessel, a couple hits by the Life Stealer, and he really gets chunked down. Okay, lane 4, 5, 8, and 14, 37 do show themselves. It's Raven. He's out. This is, this is a scary ancient creep. There we go. He's doing it Jurassic World style. Uh, it's 14, 37, gets chased out by the big old dinosaur. It looks like the Force will save him, though. Get the sun, sun to two. These, these ghost scepters, all these defensive items. Super strong right now. Until that nullifier comes out. There is one. So Lycan has to finish first. Okay. Let's see. Very even game though. Only a 4k gold lead for Predator and the experience is pretty much at zero. I think Cuckoo about being level 19 is really what's offsetting that. He's level, I mean, him and 1437, these two, I guess what you could say is the five supports, level 20 on Shadow Shaman, level 19 on Jakiro, because these experience gain talents. Sentry down and such is not, and the gem, no sort of surprise play 458 can make. And the nullifiers on both sides, that's 
And we'll see how the fights go down. I Who feel like Predator's Nullifier is more, is more important. Yeah. I feel like them just being able to just drop down this Death Prophet is going to be the most important for them in the fights. Most important thing. Both sides playing very grouped up, though. TNC Predator, they're looking to take this fight, though. And then they've got the opening onto 1437. They've got the rough chip, blood right. 1437 gets himself out to the side as he will still fall. The Firestorm finishes him off. They get the trap as well onto Zephyr. Both supports gone. Rush is up now, too. This is the third Rush on. Oh, no, no. And a godlike streak on his Bloodseeker. That's the two supports dead for 60 seconds and 40 seconds, respectively, on that Shadow Shaman and Clock. And this is, uh, this this is, is the Refresher massive. Shard, isn't it? Yeah, this is the third Rush. This is the third Rush. Mm. Refresher shard, Aegis and Cheese are going to be going the way of Predator. Who takes it? They give, okay, they bid both to Raven. Interesting. I guess they're going to pass that to Sam H, right? Yeah, okay. Do you, want, uh, do, you want, do you want the rest of Refresher Shard on the Underlord? I don't know who wants I mean, it, actually. I think they're just going to keep switching it around. It's right now, Tim's is holding isn't it. Isn't it ultimately better on Raven for the double rage? I think I think you want it on either the Underlord or Naga. Because they're okay. the heroes that can just reset and re-engage. They can just mess with the whole game plan of like what the other team wants to be doing. Like, if you if two songs, you split up the fight, that could be... Yeah, th is he giving it over to Tim's now? I think Tim's has it already, yeah. Yeah, Tim's has it, you're right. I thought one of the two sounds better to me. Like, even an Underlord rift out and then rift back in could be kind of neat, but I think the Naga just seems to be... I mean, the Naga one is just so good. I mean, I mean double songs is... It's double songs certainly is so the, much the BKBs, especially the cooldowns game, the, the durations game, though. Yeah, I think all of them, are, all of them should be five seconds this? now. Yeah. Lycans is still six, actually. Sorry. But so much control in those team fights that can come out from that sleep. You can set up with the song, and then if the fight does go bad, you can disengage. I mean, there's... Tons of different things. Tigers, they're looking to smoke up here. They've got 5.3k gold on the Razor. And 5k on their Death Prophet, too. And they go. Hook shot. Ready to fight. Around the shot. Moving in with the BKB 458. Trying to get the fight started. This goes in with the Ghost. They do the club right down. In your dream, falling very low. They've lost one. The Nullify was dropped down onto the Underlords. But he, he can't cheese. kill him. He's got the cheese. He's back up to full. Buyback's coming out. In your dream, heading straight in with the second life ready to chase down Zephyr. Look towards Raven. Can they catch out the lights? Do they get the silence with the Lincolns there? Will keep him safe. 1437 able to pick up the Valley Rune, but it may cost him his life as Raven comes in from the side, cuts him down. Tim's with the song. The ghost doing a lot, but he has the ghost scepter to counter the ghost. Tim's, he's fine. He's out to the side and he's ready to go back in now as they surround the Death Prophet. Take down 458. Net is out onto Lycan as Lycan will get ripped to pieces as well. Predator. Taking the fight and now 12k net worth lead. As they that, look to be in a very comfortable position to push this to that game free. They had 5,000 gold on Razor and 5,000 gold on Death Prop before the fight. It was looking decent though because of their positioning. I think the Serpent Wards kind of blocked them a little bit from getting to the Death Prophet. And then they focused mostly on the Razor until the buyback comes out. But they still had Aegis as well on Armel. Having all these different... Having all these things from that Roshan really starting to come into play there. Can they hold this? They don't have exorcism. Raven. He's going in onto the, the difficulty quick force. We'll keep us safe. They're going to Dark Rift. Take them out. Sam H says, we're done. We'll get the racks another time. I mean, they forced, they forced the big buybacks. The Razor bought back in the last fight. Now Death Prophet did too. That's massive. Economical damage coming out Tigers. Well, like I said, they had 5k on two of their big cores and they took they had to take that fight before that Before they were able to spend their gold So this replay as well as Armel oh, Picking up a fresh butterfly just before this fight. Yeah, literally as the fight began like look at 458 He had a he had great positioning here. I think 1437 also got some like full duration shackles off during the fight, but look, he's protected by the Serpent Warrants. They focus super heavily onto the Razor. Then he buys back. Fight's looking okay for Tiger until TNC is able to disengage and re engage afterwards. They can't actually catch the Life Sealer. They can't kill or can get rid of the Aegis the first time on Armel. And then, yeah, Tim's beautiful song. Re engage as the ghosts are ending. Looking. 
like we should get a game three out to this with a 20k lead for TNC Predator and a 15k experience lead as well. They're starting to get everything together. It seems like it could be that last hurrah TNC Tigers in this game. And we have it. Raven. Hook the racks. Got that double ult available, 458. For duration of the dose. So sort of just having that backup exorcism. If yeah, TNC do manage to force it out and take a fight outside of the use. Backup exorcism, maybe some more spirit cypher charge from the fight. Let's see what now. Zephyr. He is getting absolutely murdered there. Will buy back immediately. 458 has popped. The exorcism, they get the Shiva's card slow on for two of them. Nullifier will connect onto the live stealer, but there we have the song from Tim's. Putting a stop to it all. And we'll get a hook shot it. But the combo the Cuckoo. Oh, man, man. Look at this lay down of damage though. As that is the Razor gone dead for two minutes. Stuck in the combo of Cuckoo. They lose two. They lose three. Death Profit gone as well. Predator have done it here in this game too. They've managed to push this series on to the game three. Everything now resting on this third and final match between the two TNCs. And Predator certainly look to be back on form this game too. Uh, to, to sort of the, the, the level and caliber that we had come to expect from this squad. Yeah, I mean, it, they, they picked the Razor to counter Lifestealer, did great in the laning phase, but Raven ends 10, 0, and 10 on Lifestealer. Yeah. Armel ends 13, 1, and 14 on this Bloodseeker. I really think the Bloodseeker was extremely critical to, as a last pick to make sure that their lanes can get solidified, but I also think that the Naga Siren versus the Lycan is really, really important. Not only just for like that aspect of you can net him and hold him down, of course, in the fights, but being able to contest those Roshans. And we saw that come into play. All right, here we have it, ladies and gentlemen. One more game here in the Southeast Asia Regional Qualifiers for TI8. The winner going to TI8. The loser will go home. It's all on the line here between Tigers and Predator as game three will be right around the corner. We'll cut to a short break. Do not go anywhere as we will find out which TNC is the better. We'll see you soon.